Okay, so let's start off talking about analog sound and how early recordings were made. And that'll kind of move us into digital sound, which is primarily where we're working now when we make music and when, when we record music now. But when technology to record sound first came into being, it was only analog sound that we were able to record. So what is analog sound? Well, sound itself is just waves moving through the air, right? I talk, my throat makes sound, my lungs push air, and that generates a wave. And it's going like this. It's at the pitch that I'm speaking. These waves are probably about this long, roughly a foot or so long. Um, and they're like real, you know, physical things going through the air. It's just pressure in the air. And those are going to, if you were standing here with me, you, they would be going to your ears. And that wave would hit your eardrum and push it in just the right ways that you would be able to hear the sound. So if we want to capture that, right? Like we want to take that wave and put it in a bottle. We want to capture it. How do we do it? It's, uh, it's actually kind of a phenomenal thing to think about. Like you've got this wave flying through the air and we need to like capture it somehow. And if you think about it, there are these waves going through the air, not the only kinds of waves going through the air, right? There are tons of different kinds of waves going through the air. The example I like to give is if those waves were, you know, the waves of my voice are probably about this long, but if they were smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and they got to be like, in, you know, immeasurably small, like incredibly small, those waves we would interpret with our body as light, right? Teensy, teensy, teensy waves. We interpret with our eyes. Waves this long-ish, we interpret with our ears. But there are even longer waves. There are waves that are miles and miles long. There are waves that can wrap themselves all the way around the earth. They're that long. Um, we typically interpret those waves as weather. Same kind of waves, just much, much, much bigger. So it depends on how big those waves are, depending uh, in order for us to interpret them. If they're the right size, we interpret them as sound. If they're a different size, they are light. If they're a much bigger size, they're weather or something in between. So the way that we first came up with, we meaning humans, not me, I wasn't involved in this, the way we were able to capture sounds was using a process or using something called analog sound. So analog, you know, it comes from, uh, you know, two Greek words, meaning ana, uh, which meant according to, and logos, which meant a relationship. So analog sound means it's, you know, according to and a relationship with the sound. We have another word in English that is uh, analogous, meaning like two things that are very similar to each other. And that's what analog sound is. In other words, analog sound has captured that waveform in a way that is the same as the actual waveform. So if we look at a vinyl record and we zoom way, way, way in, what we would see is little waveforms because a vinyl record is analog sound. So we would see these little waveforms on there. That's how analog sound works is we capture those waveforms. We're able to chart out those waveforms and then using a little needle on the record and a big speaker, we can recreate those same waveforms. So when we say a sound is analog, it means we've captured the waveforms in a way that you could you can actually see the waveform. But it is the same waveform captured onto some kind of media, a disc or something like that. 